was a modest type of hero. He was 105 when the Czech Republic awarded him its highest honor last year, watched by some of those he had helped to save. He was 92 when Britain knighted him, but he was just 28, a stockbroker planning a skiing holiday when a friend suggested he go to Prague. There are heroes who don't wear capes, who don't command armies, and who don't make the headlines. They're the quiet heroes, the ones who act not for glory or accolades but because they see a need and answer it. Their stories are often overlooked, their deeds uncelebrated, yet their impact is immeasurable. They are the unspoken heroes, the ones whose actions echo through time, shaping history in subtle but significant ways. One such hero was a man named Sir Nicholas Winton. He didn't set out to be a hero. In fact he was just 28 years old, a stockbroker planning a skiing holiday when his life took an unexpected turn. But when confronted with a desperate situation, he didn't turn a blind eye. Instead, he responded with courage, compassion, and ingenuity, making a decision that would change the course of hundreds of lives. In the late 30s, as the shadow of the Nazis loomed over Czechoslovakia, Winton found himself in the midst of a refugee crisis in Prague. But rather than simply bear witness to the tragedy unfolding around him, he took action. He helped organize what came to be known as the Kinder Transport, a mission to ferry Jewish children to safety in Britain. He didn't do it for recognition. In fact, for many years, his extraordinary efforts remained a secret. Even those he had saved knew little of the man who had given them a chance at life. Yet his story, when it finally emerged, served as a powerful testament to the capacity of one individual to make a difference. One such hero was Sir Nicholas Winton, a man who saved hundreds of lives, yet his story remained largely unknown until late in his life. These are the unspoken heroes. Their actions may not be etched in gold on the pages of history, but they are engraved on the hearts of those they touched. Their stories remind us that heroism isn't always about grand gestures. Sometimes it's about making a choice, taking a stand, and changing a life. In 1938 Nicholas Winton was a 28-year-old stockbroker planning a skiing holiday. A young man on the cusp of adventure, Winton had his sights set on the refreshing chill of snow-covered slopes. However, fate had a different itinerary in mind. One of Winton's friends, moved by the plight of refugees in Prague, suggested a change of plans. Instead of skiing, he urged Winton to visit Prague, the capital of Czechoslovakia. The Nazis had recently invaded the country and the city was teeming with Jewish refugees desperately seeking a safe haven. At first, it might have seemed an unusual proposition. After all, what could a stockbroker from Britain do in a city overwhelmed by the horrors of a Nazi invasion? But Winton, moved by his friend's plea, decided to trade his ski poles for a different kind of adventure. An adventure that involved not conquering snow-covered hills, but navigating the harsh realities of war-torn Prague. Upon arrival, Winton was confronted with a scene that would change the course of his life. The city was brimming with fear and uncertainty, its streets echoing with the cries of those who had lost their homes, their families, and their sense of safety. Amid the chaos the young stockbroker saw an opportunity to make a difference. Winton decided to help organize the Kinder Transport, trains that would carry Jewish children away from the dangers of Prague to the relative safety of Britain. He began finding homes for these children in his homeland, a task that required both compassion and a keen sense of organization. It was a far cry from the ski holiday he had initially planned. Instead of gliding down snowy slopes, he was navigating the treacherous terrain of a city under siege. Instead of enjoying the thrill of adventure, he was experiencing the profound fulfillment that comes with helping those in need. Winton's holiday plans had taken a drastic turn, but this detour would lead him down a path of quiet heroism. In the face of adversity, he chose to act, a decision that would save hundreds of lives. It was this decision that would set Winton on a path to become a quiet hero. In Prague, Winton didn't just witness the suffering of Jewish refugees, he took action. As the Nazi regime tightened its grip, he saw the desperate need for someone to step in and help the vulnerable children caught in the crossfire. And so, he brought to life, the Kinder Transport. The Kinder Transport was a ray of hope in the bleakness. Trains specifically organized to carry Jewish children from the heart of peril to the safety of Britain. But Winton didn't stop at just transporting these children. He went the extra mile, ensuring that each child had a home waiting for them at the end of their journey. This was no small task, but for Winton, it was a mission he was determined to see through, no matter the challenges. And there were challenges. The process of finding homes was far from straightforward. 
Winton recounted a time when someone wrote asking for a seven-year-old girl. His response? To send them a picture of seven girls, all around the age of seven, and let them choose. This wasn't the usual way of doing things, of course, it wasn't how one would normally transact humans, but in the face of the enormity of the crisis, it was an effective method that worked remarkably well. Winton's approach was unconventional, yes, but it was also undeniably effective. It was a testament to his quick thinking and his resolve to save as many lives as he could. It was a testament to his humanity. As the kinder transport trains chugged away from Prague carrying hundreds of children towards a new life, they left behind a city shadowed by the impending war. But they also left behind a man who, in the face of adversity, had stood up and taken action, a man who had become a beacon of hope for hundreds of children, giving them a chance at a future they might not have had otherwise. In the face of a brewing storm, Winton was a beacon of hope for hundreds of children. His story is a reminder that sometimes, in the darkest of times, the most ordinary of people can do the most extraordinary things. Winton's actions have led some to call him the British Schindler. Oscar Schindler, a name many of you might recognize from the film Schindler's List, was a German industrialist who saved over a thousand Jewish lives during the Holocaust by employing them in his factories. But if we delve a little deeper and compare the two men, some stark differences emerge. Schindler, while undoubtedly a savior to many, was in a position of power and influence during the war. He had resources at his disposal, and his actions, though courageous, were intertwined with his business interests. On the other hand, Nicholas Winton was just a young stockbroker from Britain, with no political clout or substantial resources. His decision to help came from a place of pure compassion, not business expedience. He saw a crisis unfolding in Prague, and instead of looking the other way, he chose to act. He organized the kinder transport, taking Jewish children from the claws of imminent danger to the safety of homes in Britain. He did this without any expectation of recognition or reward. His transactions were not of goods, but of hope and life. He didn't merely send a picture of one girl to the potential adopters, he sent pictures of seven, underlining the urgency and the scale of the crisis. One of the children he saved, Suzanne Metis, puts it succinctly when she says, Nicholas Winton had no ulterior motive. His actions were driven by a profound sense of humanity, a desire to do what's right in the face of overwhelming adversity. While Oscar Schindler's story is well known, let's not forget the quiet, unassuming heroism of Nicholas Winton. His story reminds us that it doesn't take a lot of power or resources to make a difference. Sometimes all it takes is a compassionate heart and the courage to act. Winton's actions, driven by compassion and without any ulterior motive, saved hundreds of lives. Despite his heroic deeds, Winton's story remained largely untold for decades. It quietly lay in the shadowy corners of history, waiting to be discovered. It was a story that was not narrated by the man himself, but rather revealed by an unexpected discovery. Winton's wife one day, stumbled upon a scrapbook in their loft. This wasn't an ordinary collection of memories, it was a testament to a tale of extraordinary human compassion, courage, and action. It was a record of Winton's heroic efforts during one of humanity's darkest hours. This scrapbook held lists of names, photos, and letters from parents who had entrusted their children to a young stockbroker, hoping for their safe passage. It was a chronicle of a mission that had saved hundreds of lives. Unraveling the scrapbook's pages, Winton's wife unveiled a life's work that had remained silent for nearly half a century. And so the unsung hero's story began to resonate. In 1988, the television program That's Life took it upon themselves to share this extraordinary tale with the world. But they did more than just that. They orchestrated a heartwarming reunion, bringing Winton face to face with some of the individuals he had saved. Can you imagine the emotions that filled the room? The gratitude, the admiration, the awe, the realization that an act of kindness made decades ago had shaped their lives in ways they could have never imagined. Recognition for Winton's heroic deeds came late, but it was no less significant. He was knighted by Britain when he was 92. The Czech Republic, the very place where his journey began, honored him with its highest award when he was a ripe 105 years old. Sir Nicholas Winton, a humble hero, finally received the recognition he deserved. His story is a testament to the power of compassion and action, even in the face of overwhelming adversity.